The following video is one I wrote the script for two years ago, and then heavily edited a couple months ago. So if you hate this video, it's not my fault. It's past me's fault. Actually, it might also be present me's fault, since he's the one who dug the script back up and edited it when he didn't even have to. What was your first video game? Legend of Zelda? Metal Gear Solid? Or were you unfortunate enough to be like me and have most of your very first video game experiences be that of the TV and movie licensed variety? Thanks, Mom. And then, even around the time I was beginning to discover that licensed games had a bad rep, I just had to get Nicktoons Unite! Five days before the game came out on October 26, 2005, I found out about the game's existence via Nick.com. Nowadays, people only go on that site to find out what you... shouldn't watch, I guess? I don't think you have to worry about me there, Nick. Besides having played Super Smash Bros. Melee, the term crossover wasn't exactly a thing in my vocabulary yet, and they weren't as frequent as they seem to be becoming today. I could be wrong about that, but that's just my perspective. So back then it was like, WHOA! W and X are teaming up and going to Y to stop Z! So because of that, I got the game. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Smash. Most of you know me as the guy who for some reason likes Paper Mario's Ticker Star. It's time to delve into today's game. But I want you all to prepare yourselves. Because the sad truth is, not many people know what to do. When Nicktoons Unite! Right from the get-go, I'm getting some bad vibes. Just listen to this epic main menu music, signifying the assimilation of the greatest Nicktoon heroes! So the game opens, and I'm immediately reminded of another Nickelodeon game I'd rather be playing. SpongeBob hides, and when he spots Goddard coming out of a portal, he gets so scared his arms clip through his house. Jimmy Neutron recruits SpongeBob and explains that his arch nemesis, Professor Calamitous, has stolen Jimmy's new portal technology, unless it's this and not interested, and has gathered villains from the hero's worlds to form a syndicate. Whoa, that sounds like an evil word. As Jimmy and the others discuss how they'll handle the situation, we find out this is one of those games where characters do the same cycle of motions over and over while they're talking. Your holograms are right, Timmy. We must work together to stop the Syndicate. I know you've each defeated these guys individually. Don't you love it when characters talk while they're doing all these ridiculous hand motions? It really immerses you in the experience of the game that you are playing. The gang arrives at Vlad's castle, where, uh, someone who I think's supposed to be Vlad has captured Danny's parents, and he sends the group to the Ghost Zone prison by not even doing anything to them. How do you mess up the hit detection in your cutscenes? Whoa. I'm loving it. I'm feeling- I'm feeling the love here. I love me some mute conversation cutscenes. Isn't the whole point of crossovers to hear the characters involved speak and interact with each other? It tickles at the fanboy's ears and fulfills what if dreams! Well, Nicktoons Unite dares to challenge this precedent. So Jimmy and the gang escape their jail cell by just walking out. Oh, Jesus Christ. The combat in this game. It's... I don't even really know what to say. It's playable, but more often than not, you can get the job done by mashing the attack button. Credit where it's due, the developers also included skills unique to each character that fit them, but unless they're required to get past an obstacle, they aren't something you need to rely on constantly. The hit detection is also a little bit weird sometimes, and it's just overall kind of unsatisfying. I mean, just listen. Really, listen to this fight. Sound effects really make you feel like you're in the game, fighting alongside all your favorite Nicktoons! Fascinating! This looks like ghost hunting technology! Oh, oh, okay, now they talk? 
Okay, so the game just has the characters talk in these text box cutscenes when it feels like it. So a bunch of exorcisms and a bunch of castle trekking later. Don't worry, you're not missing much. I promise the exorcism thing isn't as cool as I made it sound. And the gang defeats Vlad by punching and kicking him a few times. And he escapes through a portal. This is far from over. Far, far from over. Very unimpressively. At least the Fentons are safe. Well, that's a relief. Okay, let's get out of here before they notice us. Except they're right there! How many more worlds are in this game? How long is each level in the worlds? I'm not ready! Now we go to Bikini Bottom, where trouble is afoot. Uh, SpongeBob, where is everybody? Now that you mention it, it is a bit quiet. Too quiet. If everyone is missing, the syndicate may be responsible. Or they didn't want to bother programming any more than the bare minimum NPCs. Now, I want you to listen to this cutscene. Listen closely. Patrick, watch out for that jellyfish harvester! What is the one thing that you think is missing from this cutscene, considering Patrick is getting sucked up and captured by a big, mechanical jellyfish harvester? Ouch. Sponge Ouch. It's Sponge Mechanical it's Sponge Jellyfish Bob. Harvester. This game can't make up its mind. Sometimes it has voices, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't have sound effects, and the sound effects it does have... <laughs> suck! The game also has music. Meh music. Some tracks are just alright, some fare a bit more better than others, and then a couple of snoozers like the track that plays in Bikini Bottom. Here's Bikini Bottom in Battle for Bikini Bottom. Here's Bikini Bottom in Nathan's Unite. So 40 minutes of mediocre and tedious gameplay later, our heroes majestically, I'm sorry, nonchalantly, enter the room where Plankton is holding Mr. Krabs hostage. It's probably worth a quick mention here that the bosses, few though there are, are probably the highlights of the game, and it does have a decent track behind them. You know, in comparison. The one big problem with the fights is that most of them are all way too long. <laughs> Patrick ends up saving the heroes. Patrick! And again, making no believable sound effects with which to help us give at least a little bit of a damn. And then they head to Dimsdale. And by Dimsdale, I mean they just went ahead and said, you know what? Yellow's my favorite color. Oh wait, never mind. My favorite colors are dull, boring, and but you know what? I should probably bring this up before I forget. There's an upgrade system. You collect coins scattered around the levels and upgrade your powers. I say I talk about it before I forgot it, because it's forgettable. You can only upgrade when you find Goddard, and upgrading really isn't something you need to do anyway, as you can very easily beat the game without it. It's clearly just something thrown in for, hey, look! Game! Not to mention when you do upgrade, it takes like seven friggin' centuries to save your progress. So later we run into Crocker, who's draining power from Fairy World, and is still trying to prove fairies are real. And yet, didn't bring any kind of video recording material to get real-time footage of said fairies, nor of the ghost and talking sponge while we're at it, who are also standing directly in front of him. As long as that machine is draining fairy magic, we can't do anything to him! But we can make fun of his outfit! Nice pants! Sorry, Cosmo. I'd be down. more inclined to laugh at your joke if I wasn't being annoyed by this ongoing, loud, obnoxious, unidentified sound effect that the developers decided to put in instead of sound effects that actually freaking matter! The game defeats Crocker in yet another five-year fight that also has three phases! Yay! And he escapes! You don't have a chance! Very unimpressively. It's a sad day when even Shaquille O'Neal has flashier exits than your entire syndicate. Y'all be cool now. I wish that none of these problems ever happened, 
and that all the bad guys were in jail. Yes, Timmy, please. I'm sorry, Timmy, but the rules say that you can only wish for changes to our world. Oh! Even Crocker is out of order. So because magic never likes to play fair, the plot continues. And now, the final stroke of my master plan. All the worlds in the, um, uh, universe? Yes, universe. You had the same voice actor the entire game. He went home before you had time to get him to say universe? 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 And we discover that a flea bot, whatever the hell that is, was planted by Calamitous inside of Goddard, and that's how he was able to acquire Jimmy's portal tech. If he has been watching us through a device inside Goddard, then it must be transmitting a signal to his base. If we can reach the device, we can track the signal back to Calamitous. We need a plan. Think, think, think. Must think how to pad out game. We can shrink ourselves down with a shrink ray and fly into Goddard's mouth using my hovercraft. Once we capture the flea bot, we can trace its signal back to Calamitous's lair. Or you could shut Goddard off, disassemble him, take the flea bot out of him, reassemble him, and then reboot his systems. You make scientific breakthroughs every other day. It should take you five minutes. But because our hero's journey into Goddard's body, where the only interesting part about it is that Goddard ate a couple of Legos at some point in his life. Everything else all looks the goddamn same. Goddard is inside Goddard. Okay. <clears throat> First off, how? Second, why? Third, when? Is this a miniature clone of Goddard that Jimmy planted inside the real Goddard for kicks? Is this Goddard the flea bob we're looking for and Calamitous designed it that way for kicks? Is the Goddard we're in right now a fake and this Goddard's the real Goddard that has been trapped inside this fake Goddard for years? Is the flea bot in Goddard or is it in the Goddard inside Goddard? Are we supposed to shrink ourselves down further in order to get inside this smaller Goddard? Will there be another Goddard inside this Goddard? And another Goddard inside that Goddard? Is there an endless cycle of infinite Goddard? Is there even a flea bot inside any of these Goddards to begin with? Was Calamitous' plan all along to get Jimmy to kill himself by continuously shrinking himself down in order to find a flea bot that may or may not exist inside a Goddard that may or may not be the real Goddard? And in turn making this game subtle political commentary on how humanity's constant efforts to understand the mysteries of life through the means of science will eventually lead to its inevitable downfall? Or is this another example of how much the game designers didn't give a shit and therefore I shouldn't either? Alright, 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 alright. I'll wrap up the story real fast. So the guys find and defeat the flea bot, trace the signal back to the syndicate's hideout, they hide in glowy balls the whole fight, SpongeBob simply unplugs the machine, and everyone pisses off to enjoy the downtime they have until they're contractually obligated to join another crossover game once again. Ah, uh, life is almost back to normal. Just one more thing to take care of. Cindy, get out of my lab! This game is... Functional. I gave it a lot of flack, but I have to, because otherwise it's not entertaining and I don't get paid. But it's definitely far from a horrible game. There's just so much wasted potential. So you're obviously going to get more mileage out of this game if you meet the following criteria. You're a fan of the shows, you have friends playing co-op with you, and you're like 10. My beard, I really ought to shave one of these days, kind of obviously knocks off three and... Pfft, What's a friend? So at the end of the day, it was primarily my nostalgia and love for the shows that saw me through to the end of an otherwise pretty mediocre experience. But everyone else didn't think that apparently because the game spawned three more sequels. How? Now before we depart for today, I want to hear from you guys. It's a very simple question. What was your favorite Nicktoons cartoon? Old or new? They could be from Nicktoons Unite or whatever. I don't care about that really. Speaking of uniting, you want to know how we can unite? <laughs> By hitting that subscribe button and the like button and sharing and commenting and watching other videos and liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Then we can truly be united as one.